Okay, so here we have a CB23 uh, it's a, by Hammerland. This is a very, very early uh, CB radio, so it's tube type, obviously. <laughs> uh, would have been like, this one was probably made mid-1963. Um, the crystals that are in it are dated to, I think it's two of 1963, so probably somewhere mid-year mid in 63 it was made. So it's a very, very early tube rig. Um, I had had problems with this one trying to get, oh my god, just the mixing, and it's it wasn't so much a mixing problem of uh, the oscillator circuits not oscillating. My problem was actually mixing and my transmit frequency. It would receive fine, but transmit was, I, honestly, I don't remember. It was like in the 30 megahertz, maybe something. Yeah, it was just it was some oddball frequency. Uh, try to go through and do the factory alignment procedure, and I'm talking, you know, with a factory original, you know, I've got service manuals for pretty much everything, so I mean, even the old stuff, <laughs> I mean, this is, you can see, partially moth-eaten, <laughs> you know, um, service manual, and yeah, it just was giving me a fit. Um, I eventually got that straightened out, um, uh, and, and these radios are, I don't want to say they're crappy, but, um, because they're nice radios, but man, did they ever have a lot of revisions in these things. Um, I've got several of these things. You know, my own. Now, this is a customer's radio, but I have several of my own. I've never restored any of them. No time. Um, but I was actually to the point where I was forced to start go pulling some of those to look at them. And none of those, uh, I think, I mean, I think about this. I think at least five of them had never been touched, other than maybe tubes changed. But as far as work on the underside, they were bone stock original. Now this one had had a bunch of work. Parts added in the oscillator circuits and some of the mixing. So yeah, so I'd, that's one thing that was really throwing me for a loop. And of course, a lot of times trying to look at a schematic and, you know, they're great for diagnosing. Looking at the right, you have a problem, oscillator, you can trace through. But trying to find parts that are missing or have been added, that's the big problem. And it wasn't that really that parts had been removed, it's that parts had been added. Um, and they're not on a schematic. Well, you're looking to see, you know, okay, is this resistor in there? And you look, okay, it's there, and you look, okay, yep, this capacitor, yep, it's there. And then you start noticing, wait a minute, well, there's another resistor in here, what the, or there's another capacitor, or this capacitor doesn't go to the right place. So I went and pulled one of my radios. It was different than this schematic in, you know, very, very minor differences, but there were differences. I go and pull another radio. It's different. Go and pull another radio. It's different. Absolutely every single one of these radios I have is different, and they left the factory that way. They made, I almost have to wonder if they made revisions on these blasted radios on a weekly basis. <laughs> I mean, in the audio circuits, the oscillators, I mean, just everything, mixing, receive, uh, first IF, second IF circuits. Every single radio I look at, it's different. Minor change. It might not be much. Added a small electrolytic, a ceramic cap added somewhere, um, the audio, the mic input circuit, that's different, completely different in some of them. I mean, it's just, ugh. So, now you're really, and there's only one schematic. This is it. That What you see here, this is just a copy of the original, you know, shrunk down. I try not to use manuals like this unless I have to. I don't want the old ones to break. You know, here's the original schematic. And yeah, when I say moth-eaten, you can see all the holes there. <laughs> yeah, the bugs have been chewing on this one. Um, but, so, I got it working. That's the main thing. That's all that matters. It's transmitting. Uh, now, of course, frequency tolerances on this aren't going to be fantastic because this is a AM radio. Uh, it's crystal synthesized, and there is absolutely no adjustments for frequency in this. So whatever the crystals oscillate at, they get mixed. That's your output. That's that's what it is. Same thing with receive. That's why they have fine-tuned controls. Um, now, uh, I got once I got it working, um, did the alignment, and that's actually part of what it was. You try and do the alignment procedure by the book. And yeah, it it works to a point. But it, that's what was throwing my balance off on my mixing scheme somewhat, and it would just it would go into self oscillation, 
And best I can figure is one of the frequencies, the lower frequency, one of these three crystals, was actually quadrupling <laughs> that. I'm not sure exactly how that was happening, but finally figured out that it was quadrupling that frequency, and that's what was end up getting mixed in and coming up with that oddball frequency I was having. I was able, like I say, finally get that adjusted out, so it was one of those, it's kind of, you do the factory alignment, and then you just kind of massage it until you, you, sometimes they only work so well. Um, but in any case, so I get it working. I always check on a spectrum analyzer. That's why it's fired up back there. You know, check now. I realize there's going to be a second harmonic on this. It's it's just going to happen. Um, and actually, there is no. There's not even an adjustment. There's no uh, a tunable TV eye trap. Back in the tube days, radios not too long after this, you would usually see on the back of the radio you would see an adjustment, and that was for the customers to do. And it's called a TV eye trap. Um, and it's just a 54 megahertz trap. That's so back in the day. If you keyed the microphone on your radio and your wife yelled, you know, yelled down the stairs at you, God damn it, you're blanking out my television. You could adjust that to try and null out your 54 megahertz second harmonic. But so I just wanted to see what it was, and I noticed some weird byproducts on either side of the carrier, and they weren't second harmonics. So let me key and grab the microphone here and just watch the spectrum analyzer there. Okay, so there's our carrier. But notice there's a little bump right there, and there's another little bump right there. Well, what the hell are those tiny little bumps? And you can see they're evenly spaced a distance away from the carrier. But do you see something else? The microphone's not keyed. See right there? There's still a tiny little bump right there. And notice it's the same bump that was there when I was transmitting. It's just smaller. So... If I actually zoom in on that, so let's just change the span to, let's say, 100 kilohertz. Hmm, yeah, there's definitely something going on there. And we'll see if I key the microphone. That is that first, that's the first bump. I actually had it set up so the center was approximately on that, that first, you know, the one in front of the carrier. Well, that frequency, it's actually one of the oscillators. And now, this now yeah, is another thing. These are kind of odd radios. It has bands, not like an export radio. It's not like bands of 40 channels. It's just the way they did their crystal mixing with this. Um, it has this window here that moves. Okay. And what you're doing there is you're selecting one of three crystals when you change bands. Okay. And then the other crystal in the, the mixing scheme is selected when you change the channel. So when you change this one, that actually changes the dial, you know, the digit being displayed in there. And when you change this one, that changes the window. But here's the kicker. Watch that hump. Now remember, the microphone that's laying down there, we're not transmitting. Watch what happens to that bump when I change channels. And now it went off screen because I don't have I have the bandwidth set too wide, but you'll see it's popped back in on this other side, so we've come back around. But that is actually one of the os one of the oscillator frequencies is leaching out through the through the antenna jack. So there are two oscillators in this. There's this one. Actually, there's three. Um, this is a transmit oscillator. This is a receive and transmit oscillator, and then the receive, so this one gets mixed with one of two oscillators, either this one in transmit or this circuit over here in receive. Now, this receive oscillator has no crystal, okay? It's just a, you can see the tank circuit here, there's your inductor, your variable capacitor. Um, so this right here is the, the receive oscillator. But that frequency we're seeing right there, if you look at the mix, the, if you pull the service manual out and actually look at the, the mixing chart for frequencies, that frequency right there is this crystal frequency exactly. So if I hook up a frequency counter directly or an oscilloscope directly to the crystal that's, you know, depending what channel I'm on, is actually oscillating, that's, that's what's actually leaching out of this radio right now. So I just thought I'd show that. It, it shows the... I don't want to say it's poor standards, because it's just what it was back in the day. Um, 
but you know emission standards out of a radio have really really tightened up over the decades um and this just goes to prove it you know i can just imagine if this radio got sent in for certification nowadays <laughs> They're going to be checking for emissions coming out of the radio cabinet and whatnot, and they'd go, what the hell, hook up a coax cable and see that, you know, relatively speaking, as far as emissions go and receive, that's a huge spike coming out of this radio in receive. you got to remember, it's not transmitting. That's in receive. It's got RF energy coming out of that coax cable when you're not transmitting. And it's just due to lack of shielding in the radio, just how they work. And another thing you have to remember oscillators in tube type radios are they're strong i mean compared to the you know the voltage levels that you'll frequently see in like a, a modern solid state radio that can be they can be fairly small they can run 10 15 you know, i've seen oscillators in some radios can run 15 to 20 volts peak to peak i mean they've run and, and it's we're talking before amplification that's just what they're you know out of the main oscillator tube that's what they come out of there as they're a really strong signal. And so, you know, you've got all these frequencies bouncing around in this radio. There's no shielding for any of these oscillator circuits under here. And it just leaches into the coax cable. And it just it gets radiated out through the antenna. But, yeah, I thought I'd show that because I, I can't say I'd ever know. And what, what made me notice it was when I keyed the mic, you know, I was checking for the second harmonic. And I noticed I, was, I saw those two other tiny little bumps on either side of the, the carrier. And I zoomed in on the first one. And I happened to notice when I unkeyed the mic, well, there was still a bump there. So I zoomed in a little bit more, you know, narrowed my bandwidth down. Of course, the more you narrow the bandwidth on a, on a spectrum analyzer, the better your resolution gets um, and accuracy. And that's when it really started to become defined. And that's when I, I was like, wait a minute. That's when I changed the channel and it moved. I was like, oh, you've got to be kidding me. You know, grab grabbed a schematic, looked down, I was like, oh, yep, yep, that's actually the frequency, that's okay, that's that crystal selected, I can change the knob, yep, there's the next one, and actually see it on the spectrum analyzer, so, you know, and this spectrum analyzer is just run off of a, a RF sampling port that's attached to this coax cable, where it goes into the test set over there, so, you know, that's not even at full strength, um, so, yeah, actually, just, let's just do that, I, one of those curiosities is going to kill me now, so let's grab a, we'll get it hooked up directly to the radio, and definitely don't want to key the radio, because I don't want to blow up my spectrum analyzer, of course, but I want to see what the actual level leaking out of this thing is in receive, so we'll actually get an accurate measurement of this thing. Woohoo! We'll just run auto. <laughs> Minus 12.6 dBm. <laughs> that's, that's what is coming out of this antenna jack right now. Is minus 12.6 dBm at 25.35 megahertz. <laughs> which the resolution is actually really wide. So that would be, uh, let's see, 25, 3, 5. So that's probably actually the 25, 3, 5, 5. So let's change the span down a little bit. The tw or 25 kilohertz, still there. Let me recenter it. Peak. Twenty five three three seven yeah, so it's like I say, it's crystals, they're out of tolerance, but that would be if the camera focuses that crystal right there. Twenty five three three five and like I say it's the oscillator's actually running right there at twenty five three three seven. But yeah. 12.6 dBm, or minus 12.6 dBm, is leaching out of the antenna jacket on this thing. That is, wow. I mean, that's, I mean, granted, that's still a small signal, but it ain't that small. <laughs> you know, if you had a radio um, sitting in the room here that, 
you know, picked up at that frequency, you'd hear it. I mean, it would, or it would just, I mean, there wouldn't be a sound because it's not modulated, but uh, you would, you'd hear quiet because it would, there, that's, that's a big enough signal just leaching out of this thing to completely quiet a receiver. So, yeah, this radio, you know, it's, it's transmitting basically in receive, <laughs> and that's just the nature of the beast. There's, you know, there's not really a lot, you know, uh, it's not the radio's fault. It has no filtering in it to block that out. There's no trap circuit to prevent that from getting out of this radio. Um, it's just the nature of the beast. But yeah, wow, have emission standards really changed? That's mainly, that was my whole point to this video is that just shows how weak or poor emission standards were on radios back in the day. Uh, so there you go.